Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the third demo of Titanic Honor and Glory. Finally, it's come out. You know how I said I'd do a Let's Play video of, of this game, when, when of the uh, third demo when it comes out. Well, here we are. Demo number three. Let's begin, shall we? Alright, we start off on a train this time, not actually on the ship. We're actually in Belfast, April the 1st, 1912. First the train from London to Liverpool, then a short trip to the docks where I boarded the ferry to Dublin, then the long train ride through Ireland to Belfast. Not a bad ride, but excruciatingly long. Check in at the guest house in the town proper, quick supper, quick sleep, quick breakfast, and a hop on the local train here to the Holland and Bolt shipyard. Fortunately, it was punctual. I was worried about being tardy for being three hours early. My darling Claire always said to me, Robin, you better get out of the house right now and go be useful for someone. She always did lovingly encourage me to show up for work early and give my best effort. I love the detail that they've actually got to put into this. We're passing the the, sh the uh, actual shipyard where the Titanic was built. Oh, and Titanic is likely no different from the Olympic. They're structurally identical. The Olympic underwent these trials months ago, so this should be a simple repeat. I board, observe her during the sea trials, vote aye or nay on her certification, and then I ride her back to Southampton. Come on, Robin, you can't mess this one up, as Claire always told me. So, you're playing in the, you're in the demo as one of the, uh, the certifiers. Here's a good look at one of those trolley jacks, look at this. Detail on that, look at that, that's beautiful. Even on the train. If I sound a bit weird, it's because I've actually coming off of a food, off of a bout of food poisoning. So don't mind me. <clears throat> but even that is beautiful. Look at that. steam train let's look at the positive the weather broke and now I've been given the opportunity to board the Titanic advance of the tribe this gives me a bit of time to really admire the beauty of the ship before I have to scrutinize every last aspect of her functionality so at this point April the 1st, 1912. The ship is completed, just ready for its sea trials. Actually, when was the, sh when was the sea trials? Give me a sec. Bear with me while I look up, look this up. Uh, feel free to stare in awe at the ship. <laughs> okay, so it, the sea trials begin the day after what what's set in the game at the moment. So at the moment, this is April the first. 1912. So the sea trials are tomorrow in game. Now here's a notice here. So 
So that's cool. Now time to go to the Titanic and board her. What a sight. I had better find my way aboard. But I suppose there isn't reason for too much haste. No one else has even arrived yet, it seems. Plenty of time to explore, if I desire. So I'm this quite is a surprised by the amount of confidence the industry is placing into this ship. She's not even certified yet, and her first ticketed voyage is just a week from now. No room for failure on these trials, I suppose. It's like getting dressed up for a date when you haven't even begun your courtship yet. How do you know if you'll be rejected or not? I learned that one the hard way. So this is actually my second attempt at doing this video. The first attempt yesterday I was feeling very much under the weather. So I, uh, I was feeling a bit, oh, how can you say, blasé. Old Bushmills Irish Whiskey. They're actually still around. They're, the Old Bushmills Distillery Company is still around today. Look them up. I'll uh, find the link and I'll post it up in, oh, and I'll post it in the description. Look at that. What a magnificent ship she was. Belfast Lock is beautiful. With the hills around it and the morning fog. It reminds me of what I always imagined Puget Sound would be like. A man sure can make a living out in Seattle, if he can hold off the plague. Okay, so apparently Seattle was gripped by plague in this time. If you want, to, if anybody wants to confirm this, please uh, let me know in the comments. I mean, I know a little bit about history, but I don't know it all uh, a hell of a lot. And this is where I get my. This is where I ask some imp for some input from you guys, the viewers, to you know fill in any gaps that I might, you know, somehow have missed. So, if you f if you want, just feel free to feel free to um, chime in. You know, let me know in the comment section below, and I will I will get back to you. So. God damn, isn't that isn't that pretty? They definitely don't make stuff. They don't, definitely don't make boats and sh and ships like they used to, do they? More more so ships, because back then boats, little rowboat dingy things. But oh, isn't that is beautiful? The uh, British ensign flying over the fantail there. A uh, huge rudder just sitting there. Can't see the propellers because they're under, I don't know, probably six feet of water. Probably more. I'd probably say like probably 12 feet, probably like, or more. Not sure. I have to. I actually have to look that one up. But all I know is you can't see them. I see they're doing all they can to extend my travel time. How do I find my way through this mess? Now, if you're like me, you can't wait for the, the full game to come out. <laughs> Worry you not. This, this will be the last demo before they release the full game, so keep your eyes out on, on their uh, Facebook page, Titanic Honor and Glory. Um... <sighs> you guys have really outdone yourselves this time. So close to the last gangway. You can see all the rivets as well. Even at this distance, you can see the rivets. I mean, they're not. The ri all the rivets are not all are not all visible. Not all the rivets are visible, because they're, they're still working on. They're actually still working on it. So once that once they've um, finished the actual. Once I've actually finished the whole thing, every single rivet would be visible. Alright, going up the 
off gangway. simply move these signs out of the way. This vessel has triple screws. Yes, I feel the same way right now too, thank you. <laughs> Any workman leaving the ship except by the proper gangway but will be instantly dismissed. No, those third class passengers are not allowed on this deck. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? As for, as for the thumbnail, I'm going to try and see what I can like get from this game. If not, I'll just grab I'll just grab a readily available picture off of Google or something and use that as a thumbnail. Make a few adjustments to it, but nothing too big. The ship, both Titanic and Olympic, they're about 882 and a half feet long, with a width of about 92 feet wide. They both weighed about nine, was it 42,000 tons, give or take. The length of about three city blocks. Now, that's not overly that big in today's standards. All these coal carriages blocking my path. Damn it, John Milligan and Company Limited. Until he's a bit pissed off at the coal carriages. <laughs> but then again, that being said, like she was fueled by coal. So of course there's going to be coal carriages. Am I going the right way? No, I'm not. Um, this way. And there's another gangway right there. No home rule. Oh yeah. <clears throat> Back then, there was a bit of strife going on in Ireland at, this, at the uh, at the time between the Catholics and the Protestants. You just can't beat that train carriage arrangement. It really stretched my cognitive abilities. People simply aren't stimulated enough these days. Claire tells me that every night. And there's the, uh, the front of the ship. There's the bridge. And the, and the forecastle deck. And when, uh, when she sank and broke, it was about here that she broke, give or take. There's two. And there's three. Come on, mouse. Behave. Eh, yeah, fuck it. <laughs> There's two, there's three, and that's where she broke. Is it pretty much after two, but four of three, but 
more closer to number three than it was number two. So, like, it, even the even the, the the even like photos of the wreck support that, as showing that she broke there. Through here? Yeah, I can. Okay, cool. Ah, oh, yep, there we go. And there's four of the lifeboats. There's actually five lifeboats there. One. Hang on. Let me just get my drawing. Let me just get my drawing tool back on. So you've got two here. So you got two here, and then one every there, and then you got two up on the uh, officers' quarters, one either side. Since the aft gangway is blocked, I'll board here to use the first track. Now imagine hearing that when you uh, when you're boarding and stuff. Look at that. <clears throat> imagine looking up as your as your boat's being lowered and seeing just and just seeing this magnificent vessel just founder. What a sight that would have been. Quite an eerie one. All right, let's go in, shall we? Now boarding Titanic. Please wait. Most first class spaces should be accessible at the moment, but I may be able to venture down to third class for a spell through Scotland Road and Eager. I believe I'm boarding before anyone else. Robin, right now you're the most handsome man on the Titanic. So I'll leave the info boxes on so you guys can see what, you know, certain areas would be. Through these doors, passengers from the tenders at Cherbourg at Queenstown, which is now a cove, would board the Titanic. Others would disembark at these locations. Uh, the first class Cherbourg tender Nomadic is the last remaining ship built for the White Star Line and is currently preserved in Belfast. Smoking in the companion ways is strictly forbidden. So there's one of the one of the deck companion ways. And here's the reception room. Look at this. This is beautiful. Look at this. <coughs> Tom Linsky and, and crew, you guys have actually done an absolutely stunning job with this. 
I especially commend them for modifying the bullpen. I never cared much for what was on the Olympus. So we're this way. So I can venture fairly, fairly uh, deep into the into the saloon. Look at this. This is beautiful. You know how first class had it so opulent and so luxurious? Now you see why. This is beautiful. I'll venture a bit further in. I see many of the tables are already set. There will be a fine banquet here for company and partner representatives, myself included, along with the one and only paying passenger joining us on our way to Southampton this evening. There's a piano there. That's beautiful. Look at that. All nicely set up. It's a shame to think that all of this is on the bottom of the ocean. If she'd survived, this would have been this would have been a brilliant little museum. She would have made she would have made a freaking brilliant museum. French tapestry woven, so it's a woven tapestry, woven by Orbison, how do you pronounce that, uh, for the White Star Line based on the Chase the Guys series. Anybody who's French want to actually, you know, tell me how to pronounce that because, yeah. Uh, D-Deck, passengers are, not, are requested not to smoke in this room until after lunch. So back then they were fairly relaxed about, you know, smoking. And here's the piano. Steinway Model B for Grand Piano, one of six ab aboard. a view over uh, Belfast Lock. Here's the uh, the other side, the port vestibule. Look at the detail on that, that's beautiful. You don't get that these days. You definitely don't get that these days. What do you reckon, up or down? Ah, oh, we'll go up. We'll go up. We'll go down afterwards. <clears throat> Alright, C, C deck. Right, that's C deck aft. That's C deck four. So that's looking forward. The lifts are out of order. That's fine. Real men don't take lifts. Lifts are for women, Claire says. Robin? Take the long way up. Yeah. This is first class. So they had they had it pretty good. Jesus. Oh yeah. That's the person from Titanic that from the um from the 1996 Cyberflix game Titanic Adventure Out of Time. Having him just pop up like that is a bit creepy. Soon 
this area will be bustling with passengers anxiously sending telegrams and complaining about the most trivial of matters. I consider it a blessing that I will not be around to witness that. <laughs> and consider it also a blessing that you didn't actually sail on the maiden voyage there, Robin. There's the uh, inquiry desk in the person's office over there. Right. Stateroom C55 to C121 odd. So this is the Strausers. seen to some of the staterooms. I think there was one that I saw here that I could actually go into. I'll have to have a look. Uh, somebody's also engraved their name in or sort of a, a love heart sort of thing into one of the doors. Now in real life that wouldn't fly. That wouldn't have flown with uh, White Star. Yeah, they would have kicked up such a fuss. There's the bathrooms. So, most staterooms in that didn't actually have their own ensuite bathroom. So, it was a communal sort of thing, even, even in first class. But, that being said, because the ship was so, I, I don't know, narrow compared to, compared to today's standards, like there are some some rooms that did actually have that a bit more like a B deck. Uh, no more B deck if anything, because B deck is B deck is where all the uh, the who's who of the era were staying. So there's one of the there's one of the beds. Ah no, no uh, I thought that was I thought that was open there for a sec. No, it, somebody's going to put a stool there. Anyway, that's this is C120. But even here, they still had it fairly fairly good. linen cupboard. Here's another one of those old bush mills, Irish whiskey Irish whiskies. Nothing else really down this way, so I'll turn back. This is your cabin in Titanic Adventure Out of Time, C-73. wonder if anybody actually occupied that. Post Officer and Marconi Officers Saloon. Countess of Rothus. Harris, John and Florence Cummings. <laughs> Anywho, 
So you've got not WT Stead. Who do I know that name from? Frederick, Frederick and Jane Hoyt. There's the, uh, the quack. There you go. And there's the, sh to the ship's hospital down there. Also where the, uh, the padded room would be, is down there. I come down here. Assistant Surgeon John Simpson. Luigi Gaddy. Chief Steward Andrew Latimer, C-102, to Second Class Promenade, Service, C-102, C-100, Carl Bear, Here we go, C-142. So this is the, the room that you can actually go in and have a look around in. So here's, here's, here's that room that I was mentioning. So this is a C-class, uh, sorry, C-deck cabin. Typical first class of the era. So, Samuel and Nella Goldenberg, the dog breeders, and Madame de Villiers, al alias of Mademoiselle Berta Maine. Belgian singer secretly engaged a passenger Quig Baxter, <coughs> who had a B, B deck cabin. I'll, I'll won't bore you with any more details about the passengers on, on C deck, but look, this is just beautiful too as well. Look at this, and then what have we got down here? We've got more cabins. No, we don't have more cabins. We have a crew only thing. Okay. Lots and lots and lots of cabins. She could have carried about 3,000 people total. Alright, so we're now on B deck. There's the, uh, one of the, pro one of the promenades. One of the private promenade entrance. That's also a private promenade entrance as well. this one so that there's the uh, private promenade open so you can actually see into it that there 
is one of the Cardazers, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. So they had their own private promenade thing. So this is B deck. We go this way. So go forward. And there's the door to the front to the forecastle deck. It leads all the way out to the forecastle deck. There's the elevators. So there's all three elevators are on B deck. Ooh. B deck is even more Travelling with her maid, 14... How, how many steamer trunks do you fucking want? Oh my god. Don't exactly travel light, do they? Mrs. Charlotte Wardle Cardiza and Mrs. An and, sorry, Miss Anna Ward. Travelling with her maid, 14 steamer trunks, 4 suitcases and 3 crates of baggage. You are on a trip. You pack light. Jeez, the rich, the rich do know how to freaking travel, do they? Don't, sorry, don't know how to travel. In certain respects. If you're going to travel, you can travel light. You take what you need. Not take half the bloody house. But, who am I to, you know, judge who takes what on a, on a ship? I mean, I, I bet you back then that was normal. But 14 steamer trunks, come on. And steamer trunks are not exactly small. They're big buggers of things. Mr. Thomas Cardiza. Mr. and Mrs. Ryerson. Mrs. Ryerson lost her husband in the sinking. Miss Suzette Ryerson and Miss Grace Scott, daughter of the Ryersons and governors. <sighs> oh, excuse me. There's their there's their maid. John and Emily Ryerson, son and daughter of the Ryersons. Yeah, they had their own cabin as well. Lucky buggers. Mr. and Mrs. Charles and Hayes, General Manager of the Grand Trunk Pacific Railway, who's in this cabin. Mr. and Mrs. Thornton Davidson. Miss Anne Perot. Lucy Noel Martha and Miss Gladys Cherry. Miss Roberta Maloney. So even the maid gets her own cabin too. Lucky bugger. Right. So we've got a crew only door. So you had sometimes you had cabins like this. to here. 
here. I'll check that later afterwards. Uh, this is the B deck aft restaurant reception room. Does remind you of Paris, though accepting the smell of overflown sewage. A wonderful memory of coming back to me with that city. Yeah, unfortunately Paris these days is a hole. No offense to any any French people that live there, but with all the shit that's going on these days, Paris is a hole. Oh how simple times they they led back then. Back in these days. So they've got a menu up for not April the twelfth. The cashier's office. Odd that this room would have its tables already set. Mr. Gotti hasn't even boarded yet. Oh well, top marks for presentation. Truly is top monks presentation. Look at this. I mean, I think they've actually improved a little bit on this. I mean, I admit I haven't got much of a keen eye for you know small details like that, but I definitely think they've improved. Look at that, the rippling water and everything. Love the wood detailing here. It's absolutely perplexing. Now that's a craft I can really respect. Lovely wood. I've always been fond of wood. When younger, I used to cut wood for the poor folks two streets over. My neighbors started calling me Robin Wood. They always laughed, uh, but I don't know why. I wore that title proudly. You know what? I agree with you, mate. It's beautiful, isn't it? All the gold inlays and stuff. I see Tommy Andrews is already on board. Why does this surprise me? His drawings are scattered about like toys in a nursery. Well, I shouldn't intrude here any longer. Is that a that's a banana. That is indeed a banana. Too bad you can't jump. Clipboards everywhere. What a fine accommodation for the unwinding of the gentlemanly sort after a long day at sea. If only it were open now, and there were men in there to socialize with, perhaps then I'd make some friends. Don't worry, you'll get to see that in the, in the finished game. So put it as black and white, you can see a bit more detail, funnily enough. Well, 
it ends up going a bit grainy, like it would in, fo in like photos of the era. But picks up a little bit more. There's the ADEC promenade. There's a camera right there. So they had pretty good, they had pretty good accommodations back then. Back down to sea deck. So yeah, Tom Linsky and, all, and the Four Finals Entertainment crew have definitely outdone themselves with this game, that's for sure. Would you believe that they're actually an indie company? Unlike the AAA game manufacturers, say like Activision and all that, where they tend to rush games. Oh no, this is not rushed. Because they've been at this for now, what? Oh, bloody hell. At least seven years, I think? More or less? But can you blame them for wanting to get every single bloody detail right? Because I certainly don't. Going down to E deck now. So we're now on E deck. So we've got some cabins this way. So E deck is not as, uh, I would say, opulent as A through C, uh, sorry, boat through C deck. Mainly because you can see exposed rafters and pipe work. But it was still. It was still fairly, fairly well set out. Exposed rafters, rivets, etc. But then again, that being said, you know, it was fairly well, fairly well put together. I mean, I don't think they really skimped on frickin' materials, would you? I mean, if you were building a ship to carry pe people across the Atlantic, sorry, the Atlantic, sorry. I'm a bit tired, so don't mind me. <sighs> yeah, if you're building a ship to carry people across the Atlantic, would you want to skimp on materials? I wouldn't think so. Definitely wouldn't think so. I mean, what's what? What would be the point of that, really? E twenty-seven. So there's not very many E deck cabins in first class. I'll go through there soon. I just want to go down. Go down one more. And this is F deck. F deck is the lowest deck of, of the grand staircase. There are no first class cabins on this deck, and apart from the floor of the squash court, no first class facilities below this deck. 
So below this deck is... This is mainly 2nd and 3rd class caverns on F deck. The only thing 1st class... I hate to be back here in such a cramped cubby. The walls bearing down on you like all the troubles, hopes, and deep desires you dare not dwell upon. <sighs> all the 1st classes on... Oh, I'd say boat through... Boat through E deck. And some amenities on F deck, like squash court, Turkish bath, swimming pool. They called it, a, what do they call it, a plunge bath? A nice Arabian motif with cooling colors as passengers relax after their time in the bath. But what a poor state these workers left it in. Apple, sandwiches, banana, and another sandwich. Oh yeah, please contribute to the guys that are making this at www.titanichg.com. The fuck is that? Oh, if I was the white star line, I would go off at the worker that tossed the uh, their sandwich wrapper into the change room. I would rip them a new one. What the fuck is this? Found another banana and a... Hmm. And another! And, and another! What the fuck? You, you gonna... Hmm. Is... Seriously, is this the way the workers left this ship? When they'd finished doing everything, they just tossed. Who on earth was that lucky dog testing out the electric bath? And I believe I see a sliver of the plunge bath as well. Oh yeah. There is the swimming pool. Also known as a plunge bath. So that's that for the for the F deck. You can really get a sense of you. Excuse me. <clears throat> you really get a sense of the uh, the, the sense of the grandeur of this ship, kinda. All right, here we are. <coughs> so we'll go this way first. This is glorious. You can near well see half the length of the ship in this cold. Boiler room three. Third class dining saloons. Boiler room two. Well, it was boiler room six that started flooding, and then boiler room five a bit later on when it, when, the, when a bulkhead gave way. At least I think it was a bulkhead that gave way and not just you know just flooding over. Musicians, engineer stewards, storekeepers. There's a watertight door right there. On down to the food stores, crew compartments, and stern of the ship. No need to go this way. Okay, so there's boiler room one, boiler room two, we'll go down this way. Third class dining saloon. A stark contrast from the first class accommodations, I should say. 
but still a major improvement from the other liners I've inspected. In all honesty, I envy these people in the lower class. The world is open to them as they move to America and build their future how they choose. They could be loggers, for example. But father wanted me to be a surveyor like he and his father. No logging for you, Robin. Now wash your ears. <clears throat> So I think they did this to sort of give them a bit of a ho uh, a bit of a homey feel. You can see they've pulled it off really well because it it has a, a bit of a homey feel with you know this also being on a ship as well. So so that, that so that they don't feel as you know homesick. So we're on the lower deck. So So we're we're around yeah the um uh I would say yeah around by the frickin' um coal cart. Now, if you hear me swearing at all during this video, I don't care. <laughs> but then again, I'm not swearing to be obnoxious. I'm swearing because I'm, I'm lost for words. Boiler room three. Four Stewart's Levy. So there's the sh and not trying to sound vulgar here. The Stewart's shit house. <laughs> so you've got toilet stalls in there and then urinals around there, I think. This is Scotland Road, named for a street in Titanic's home port, Liverpool, where many crew of the early White Star Line ships lived. Scotland Road <coughs> is the main access passage for crew and third class passengers. It ran the length of the ship along the port side, although what is featured here is only one section near the middle of the ship. So, but you can actually see, unlike Demo 1, you can actually see pretty much the entire length of Scotland Road, not bits of Scotland Road with it blacked out on both ends. And the crew, the crew dorm. Boiler and five. Here's Boiler Room 6. This open space looks like a fine spot for gathering and mingling between all parts of Europe as they make their journey across the pond to the New World. Perhaps a place on the west coast, like, like Seattle. There's another thing with that Irish whiskey. So I really cannot wait to be able to actually explore the entire ship in its full detail. Oh dear, the door has opened. Perhaps I'm not supposed to look in here, but I can't pass up this opportunity for a little adventure. Oh, if Claire were here now to see me being so daring. Claire is this guy's wife, I th I'm pretty sure. There's one of the uptakes. Yeah, 
that's that's one yeah that's one of the uh, the boiler uptakes. How by Edward did I get myself here? Climbing too high, I think. No, Robin, it's not your time to get your angel wings just yet. No, not just yet. Says in there. Anyway, yeah, that's one of the, uh, the one of the funnels there. Probably be the foremost funnel. I'll have to have a look at my model, but that looks like the foremost funnel. Wow. So I can go back out there. So it's a petty officer's toilet. Okay. Back in and down. Quite hot here. Where are the workers, though? Well, I suppose they're likely firing up the other boiler rooms. Here's another Titanic Honor and Glory. Um, what's that word? Uh, uh, Easter egg, sorry. That would be. If you've played Titanic. Fucking Titanic Honor and Glory. Titanic Adventure Out of Time Easter egg. Sorry. Um. If you've played Titanic Adventure Out of Time, uh, then you'll know what I've, uh, you know what I'm on about. But if you haven't, I'd suggest finding it and do it and play it because it's a good game. It's a good game for a 1996 game. So. Buckets of yellow paint. I think it was yellow paint. Down. Down again. So here I am in down in the boiler room, down in boiler room six. Shovel, shove some coal in, pick up, like, pick up some more coal, shove it in, pick up more coal, shove it in. Basically, this was what they, what, this is, the, this was their job. Are massive. Twenty-nine on board, propelling the ship through the water like an untamed beast. I anxiously await their performance during the sea trial. Shortly, finally free and not held back from anything. No Mr. Tundry in sight. Just freedom. So there's a watertight door there. Basically, to escape, they actually had to go up these ladders, up, then up again, then up here, 
down Scotland Road. The next one. And then climb down to into Boiler and Fire that way. Uh, what else? What else is there? That's pretty much it, I think. Anyway, if, you've li if you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Um, also, please, cl please click the bell button so you're actually informed of any further updates by me on my channel. Um, I will post the link for to get this demo in the description. So if you're interested, please, do please actually download the demo and play it for yourself. Uh, as always guys, thank you so very very much for watching as I know it's a long video, but yeah <laughs> um, So yeah, thank you so very much for watching guys and bye-bye uh,